Oh, I finally found the resting place of the Sword of Truths. They say any who look into its blade are bound to know forbidden accuracies. What could that mean? Secrets about the universe? What happened to the original inhabitants of Minecraft? How my bosses keep becoming sentient? Let's find out. For the sacred knowledge of- You know, I also heard there's a sort of lying to make people feel better hidden away somewhere around here. Hello everyone, and welcome back to a Command Basics video. Today, instead of looking at the basic syntax of an important command, I thought I'd delve a little deeper into optimal syntax to give people a little more to play around with while making items. I've had a lot of people ask me questions related to coloring text on items, making them have a glint, and how they can do things like destroy items in adventure mode. So today we'll be looking at the extra parameters of the slash give command in order to make items with a bit of flair for your world. Now it should be noted that due to the length of some of these commands, it's best to put them in a command block rather than trying to fit them in chat. Also, everything I'm going to talk about today can be done much easier with MC Stacker, so make sure you check out the slash give command editor there if you want to know how to make these quickly. For starters, let's talk about all aspects of item flair. Flair usually refers to an item's appearance, both visually and in its UI. If we take a look at this holy apple, we notice right away that there are many bits of flair added to this item. The name is unique, all of the text is colored, there's a lore description, the item itself looks enchanted, and it even lets us know that it can break grass in adventure mode. We'll go through each of these aspects of flair and how to add them one by one, starting with the custom name of an item. We've talked about this one before in some of my trinket and armor videos, but as this is a basics video, I'll break it down as simply as I can. No matter what flair we're adding, all of our editing is done in an item's tags. Tags are unique properties of an item that can affect various different parts of the item. For example, there's a tag that changes how quickly an item can be picked up once it's dropped on the ground, and another to determine if the item has gravity. In order to edit the tags of an item, we need to start with our basic give command. And today we'll be working with the slime ball, so I'll do slash give at p slime ball. And then I'll put those little curly brackets in at the end to determine that there is something unique about the slime ball. This is actually where we place our tags. Now, usually each tag has its own unique namesake that simply tells the game which value to apply to that tag. Think of this like me writing is cool colon 1b, which would set the is cool tag of my item to 1 in this case, or true. This is a made up tag though, so it doesn't do anything, and we'll actually look at this later. But for editing the text display of an item, it's actually a group of tags within the display tag. So to start, we need to write display with a colon and another set of curly brackets as our overarching tag. And then we need to decide which part of the display that we want to edit. So within this next set of curly brackets, we want to edit the name. So we will write name like this with another colon and another set of curly brackets. Note that while some single use tags are lowercase like display, most nested tags are uppercase. It's really important to follow capitalization when making commands, so if your command doesn't work, please check that your capitalization is correct. So now let's actually make a name for this weapon. If we break apart what this is piece by piece, we have a few parts that can make up our name. Firstly, there's the actual written text aspect, which make up the words of our name. Let's start there. First, we have to let the game know that this section could contain multiple text fields. So to parse that, we have to add a pair of single quotes around our curly brackets, like that. Then, entering the curly brackets, we have to put text, as the first field will be the text we write. Now, here's what a lot of people forget. Even though text is technically a type of field, it's also a string, or word. Meaning that for the game to recognize what we want it to do now that we're inside of tags, we have to contain all strings inside a pair of double quotes, like this. This will be made a lot simpler if you've ever done any kind of programming before, but you don't need any background in that to understand how to format in Minecraft. So now it looks like this, and because we want this to actually define a field, we'll put a colon. And now that we have the field set up, we can actually write what we want our item to be named. Again, this is a word or a string, so we'll have to surround it in a pair of double quotes. For this unique slime ball, I'm going to name it Super Goop. And if we've lined up all our brackets right, this should be it. Note that Minecraft will actually tell you if you've parsed anything wrong, if you have, you know, wrong brackets or quotes or anything here, it will say, look, we've expected a curly bracket right here. So you can just go ahead and follow those rules. 
Now, if I press done, exit the command block, and press this button, we can see that we've actually named our slime ball Super Goop. Look at that. That is how you name an item, and it's super easy. Next up, though, is adding a description known as lore in Minecraft. So if we go ahead and copy and paste the same command as before in a new command block, we only have to add a few things. First, as I mentioned earlier, lore is actually a nested parameter of display as well. So we want to put the lore field after the entire name field, starting with a comma, indicating that we have an extra field here. So I'll go ahead and put lore with a colon. And now this is going to look almost identical to the name field, but this time the game needs a set of square brackets to start. Square brackets usually indicate an array in programming, or a list of things inside it. And because lore can actually have multiple lines of text on an item, we need to set up these brackets just to be safe, so the game could potentially read it all. So, just like before, we want to wrap our whole text field in a set of single quotes to parse multiple text fields. And then, for this example, I'm actually going to use another set of square brackets, so I can show you how to break up your lore field into multiple sections. Again, we need curly brackets to start our first text field. So if we go ahead and write text with a colon in double quotes, like this, just like the name, we want to actually put what our description is supposed to say. Now, because I'm going to break this up into different sections, I'm going to have one word per section. Realistically, this will actually just look like normal text once we actually spawn the item, but it allows us to edit each section individually with fancy edits later. Essentially, I'm future-proofing. So for this first section, I'm just going to put the letter A with a space after it, like that. And that's actually it for this first section. Now after that, we put a comma, indicating that there's more. And because we're already within our set of square brackets indicating a list, we can just add another text field, and the game will parse it as a continuation of the lore. So this next section, we also want to be a text field, and this one I'm actually going to write strange again with a space after it. I'll then put a comma and make one more text field. And for our third and final section, I'm going to write substance. Now, in reality, you only need one of these sections if you just want your lore to be a straightforward sentence. But again, I'm going to show you in a minute that we can actually make the lore section individually broken up into different formatting, so I'm kind of future-proofing here. Okay, now, assuming we nailed all our brackets again, let's go ahead and press done and activate this second command block. And if we take a look at Supergoop, sure enough, it's still named Supergoop, but now with the description of a strange substance. Notice how even though we did break up the lore into different sections, it still looks like one cohesive sentence on the item. So now we know how to name and describe an item. This is great because it really gives a unique aspect to whatever item you're editing, but it does feel a bit bland. As of right now, all items we design this way will have the same style of name and description. Well, that's where color and formatting can come into play. Let's once again copy our previous command and paste it in a new command block. I'm going to start by changing the color of our name to be green to match the slime ball. This is actually done by adding a new field within the text section of our name. And this time it's going to be called color. And remember, when you add a new anything, you need to make sure there's a comma before it. So now I'm going to write color. And even though color is asking for a specific hue of text, it is still technically a string. Therefore, we must wrap it in double quotes. And the same, of course, is going to go for whatever color we end up picking. Now we use our colons to define. And now we just have to choose a color, which we will again wrap in double quotes. Now, Minecraft natively has a list of 16 colors to choose from. Or you could use hex code, but we'll touch on that in a minute. For now, I will just simply choose the green color. If you want a list, you can go to the Minecraft wiki. Okay, just by doing that, if we press done and go back to the item and take a look at it, we can see that the name is now fully green. This is great, but we can take it a step further. Remember, just a minute ago, we broke the lore up into sections? Well, that's because Minecraft lets you edit sections of text individually, meaning each section can have its own format and color. Let's start with the A over here. Now, by default, the lore section of an item is always in italic. We can overwrite this by adding a specific field for the style we want to change. Right after the text parameter for A, let's put a comma, and let's write italic, also wrapped in double quotes, and we are going to set it to false, not in quotes. Now, as a quick aside, why wouldn't we put false in quotes? 
up until now we've talked about needing to put any word or string within a pair of double quotes. Well, even though false is indeed a word, it's not actually a string. It's a boolean in this case. And all a boolean is is a true or false statement. So the game knows which way to flip a switch, on or off. So because we only need quotes for strings the game is trying to parse, we don't actually need them for booleans, or integers, like numbers. Alright, programming talk aside, now the A will no longer be italic, but that's not very congruent with the rest of the piece. Well, because we want to highlight how strange this goop is, let's move over to the next piece of text. We're going to go ahead and add a color to this one, just like the name of the item. So I'll go ahead and add a color field with a colon. But this time we're going to use hex code. We set it up in the same way by adding the color field, but instead of just a name of the color we want, I'll fill in the hex code that I know makes it a cool purple-like color, which is actually hashtag BD96FF, and remember to wrap it in quotes. To get a hex code color of your own, just open up a hex code color picker wheel on the internet and copy and paste whatever the color code is into Minecraft. But we're not quite done yet. Let's make sure this part stays italic so it stands out just by making sure we can set italic to true. And again, remember, because this is a Boolean, we don't need quotes. Okay, last section now. Let's just copy what we did with A and set italic to be false. And that should be it. Now we can go ahead and give ourselves the item, and voila! It's a lot more stylish than before. Now, these are your basic parameters for editing any item. And just with sections, colors, and formats, you can do all sorts of things. You can also use bold or underlined as style options, just like italic. And with hex code, any color is now your tool. But we can even do a few last things to add more flair to your item. Let's say you want to denote just at a glance in your inventory that the item itself is special without needing to hover over it with your mouse. Well, unfortunately, we can't edit the sprite of an item on the fly. But what we can do is give it that nice enchantment glint letting players know that they shouldn't just use this item in a normal crafting recipe. Once more, copying and pasting our command. This one is actually really easy to achieve. Now technically in Minecraft, any item that is considered enchanted gets the glint. But what happens when you can't enchant something like a slime ball or don't want to add sharpness to a sword just to get it to shine? Well, luckily the devs thought of this, and if we go ahead and actually just add a brand new tag completely outside of the display tag, we'll call it enchantments. Now, just like lore, this can be a long array of enchantments technically, so we do have to do a set of square brackets to indicate a list. Usually when enchanting an item, you'd set up a pair of curly brackets like this, and then write out whatever enchantment you want it to have inside. But what if you just leave this blank? Well, for all intents and purposes, this item is now considered enchanted with an actual enchantment. So if we press done and spawn our item, sure enough, it has that sweet enchantment glint. Easy as that. Now our item is truly full of flair. But the last thing I want to showcase today is how to add functional tags to the item as well. I've had a lot of people ask me questions on how to get villagers to trade items that only break certain blocks in adventure mode. So I figured I'd showcase it here. Now that we know how the tag system works, conveniently, you can actually add whatever tags you want, as long as they don't create any errors. In theory, just like before, I could add the custom tag is cool and set it to 1B. Would this do anything? <laughs> well, no. This isn't a native tag to Minecraft, but I could sure as heck do it so later I could test for any items that have the is cool tag. More functionally though, we could also add the can destroy tag which allows your item to break certain blocks even when the player is in adventure mode. I'm going to go to the beginning of our item to add this just for alphabetical sake. So just like enchantments, we can write can destroy with a colon and make sure we put a comma after whatever we do to indicate that it's part of a larger list. Now note, when we do this, this doesn't actually overwrite the mining speed of the item. If you set this slime ball to be able to mine obsidian, it just means that it is now physically able to in adventure mode, not that it will suddenly do it at the speed of a diamond pickaxe. Nonetheless, let's just set this slime ball up for breaking glass. Again, using square brackets because it could technically be an array of items you want it to break, but this time we don't actually need any curly brackets, just the ID of the item in quotes because it's a string. So for this one, I'm going to do Minecraft colon glass. That's it. So now if we spawn our item, 
we can see that it has the tag can break to let us know it can break glass in adventure mode. A fully flared item indeed. Well, that's it for item flare. You now know the basics of naming your item, adding a description, formatting it, and even adding other tags to give it glints and functionality in adventure mode. Remember that MC Stacker lets you do this in a very streamlined way, but it's important to learn the basics as well. Remember to leave a like on the video if this helped you at all, and let me know what items you'll be customizing in the future. Until next time, guys, see- Oh, wait. <laughs> I almost forgot. Now that we have something that breaks glass, we can finally get to that treasure. Oh, here we go. I knew it was around here somewhere. Ah. See? Now I do feel better about myself. See ya!